So what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be making uh, our interpreter understand print hello world. So as you can see, I have a file here called test.lang and it says print hello world. So that's the source code for our language. Um, well, for a part of, this is not the source code of our language. I mean, this is a file with our language in it. And then we're going to, in basic.py, we're going to um, use the source code. And in basic.py, we're going to actually start writing the source code of our language. Of our interpreter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a run function and what the run function does if you've ever programmed in C is it's just going to be the function that starts the program off. So if I define the run function up here uh, I'm just going to define it with the open file function as well. So what the run function is is it's a function of functions basically and what the open file function is going to do is it's going to have a command line argument so that we can pass file names to it. Then what I'm going to say is from sys import all so we can use command line arguments uh, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to define the open file function and in here what I'm going to say is print file name and then up here I'll just say file name so if I run this now uh, python3 um, basic.py and then test.line as you can see it prints out the word test.line which is our file name. So now we know what the file name is we can uh, open the file. So I'm going to say data equals um, file name whoops that's actually it's uh, open file name and then we're going to say we're going to open it for reading and then we're going to read from the file. Then what we're going to do is we're going to print the data so we can see that the file has been read. So as you can see it says hello print hello world which is exactly what I put in this file. What we're going to do now is we're going to return data so that we can use it in the rest of the program because we return this then what we can do is we can say data down here and we can assign that equal to the return value of the open file function and this data and this data have nothing to do with each other they're just the same name there's actually no reason for it uh, and then what we're going to do now is we're going to create two well, we're going to create one function so in an interpreter there's two main functions there's a lax function and a parse function and what the lex function does is it sort of makes the interpreter understand what everything is. So here we have a print keyword. So what the um, uh, lex would do is it would say, uh, what is this? This is a print keyword. So it's going to work out as a print keyword. That's what it does. And it's going to say this, what is this? This is a lot of letters, but in between, but on the outside of the letters is two double quotes. So that must be a string. And then it's going to say there's a print and then there's a string. And it's going to have a list of these things called tokens. And then what it does is it passes these onto the uh, parser. What a parser does then is it says, oh, there's a print and there's a string, so it means I have to uh, output the string to the screen. Or if it saw a number and then another plus and then a number, it would say I have to add those two numbers together. So I'm going to create the lex function now. And up here, I'm just going to define the lex function. And I'm going to just say, I'm going to pass data to the lex function. Then I'm going to say this is the file data. I'll just say, uh, I'll say file contents. Then what I'm going to say is uh, file contents equals uh, list file contents. And if I just print file contents, you'll see we get a list and each item in the list is a letter from the file. So what we're going to do now is we're going to create a for loop and we're going to loop through every letter in the file and work out what each one, what each uh, keyword means in the file. So we're going to say for, uh, let's say, char in file contents. We're going to say print char. As you can see, that prints out every letter in the file. So what we're going to do first is we're going to say if, uh, we'll actually say toke plus equals char. Because what this token variable does is it gets bigger and bigger. Um, the more uh, throughout the running of the program. So each time this loops, the token variable gets bigger. So what I mean by that is if I just print it out, as you can see, uh, whoops, we have to just come up here and say token equals nothing. So as you can see, it starts off with p, and by the end of the, by the time it's finished looping, um, the token variable is equal to print hello world, which is the whole file. So what we're going to do is we're going to say if to, whoops, toke equals space. So we're going to ignore spaces. So we're going to say if it's a space, then we're going to set it equal to nothing because we're going to ignore that and reset the token variable. Then what we're going to say is l if toke 
equals print. And we're going to say uh, print find find a print. Then we're going to say token equals nothing because we have to reset the token variable each time we find a valid token. Then what we're going to say is we're going to find strings. So we're going to say l if uh, token equals uh, double quote. So if this is a double quote, just ignore that slash. That's just because that's just an escape character. So we can put a, a quote inside two quotes. And uh, we're going to say uh, if state equals zero, then we're going to say state equals one. Then we're going to say else. We say l if state equals one. We're going to say state equals zero. So state basically means if state is equal to zero, then we take every letter in the program we find as a keyword or part of a keyword or a variable or something like that. And then we say if the state is equal to one, then it means every letter we find, we're gonna assume is part of a string. So I'm gonna create a state variable up here and set it equal to zero. Then what I'm gonna say down here is L if state equals uh, one. So if the state is equal to one, that means we found a double quote. Then that means we want to say uh, we're just going to use another variable called string, and we're going to set that. We're going to say plus equals character. Then up here we'll just create the string variable, and then what we're going to do is uh, we're going to. Whoops! Uh, we want to say. If state's equal to one, we're gonna reset the string variable back to uh, being empty. But before that, we're gonna print uh, find a string. So if we just run this now, it says find a print. We actually have to just reset the token variable again. So uh, if we just hit enter, as you can see, it says find a print, find a string. So we find these two tokens now. So that's it for this video. Don't forget to like, comment, favorite, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.